Now, to start off graphing these graphs that we don't know much of from before, they tell us to go back to one of our graphing strategies from way back. And this is a very important strategy. In fact, sometimes on the final exam, people who use this strategy get questions right over people who just say, I can't remember how to graph. I won't try any strategy. The key strategy for whenever you don't know how to graph something is to graph a few points. And the best way to find a few points is to make a table of values. Of course, the table of values method is long-winded and slow and not very accurate at times. So we always develop better ways of graphing. But it's nice to know that you can always go back to something as simple as a table of values to find out what a graph might look like. So for example, if you put in some values in here, maybe a couple of negative values for x, maybe a zero is always nice and a couple of positive values, what happens? Oh, I want to put in just one more. Well, if I plug in negative 2, I'm going to get negative 8 minus 12, negative 20. If I plug in negative 1, I'm going to get negative 1 minus 3, negative 4. 0 is easy to plug in. I get 0. If I plug in 1, I get negative 2. If I plug in 2, I get 8 minus 12, negative 4. If I plug in 3, I get 27 minus 27, which is 0 again. So. If I, was, if I were to graph what I have so far, I would know the following things. Negative 2, I'm going to put negative 20 down here, is one point. Negative 1, negative 4, that would be about there. 0, 0. 1, negative 2. 2, negative 4. 3, 0. So this is the information that I have from my table of values. From what we learned just before about odd degrees and even degrees, we know that this is an odd degree function. That means its end behavior is going to act like a line with a positive slope, because the leading coefficient of ours is positive as well. So knowing that and knowing the points that we have already, if I draw a smooth curve through the points, this is what I have. Now, some things about this graph that we don't know is I drew my, I could draw through all of these points again and make it dip down lower than I had originally. I mean, you're very tempted when you draw points to hit that lowest point and say, oh, that must be my minimum. But we don't know for sure where the minimum is. But in a sketch like this, either that green graph or that purple graph would be fine. You're going through all the points that you have. Probably the best sort of strategy for how do I know how to draw them is try to draw through the points as smooth a curve as you can. And I think we probably did that a little bit better with the green one. The purple one, I kind of pushed lower to make it work. But either of those would be fine. Later on, we're going to find out that factoring this is going to help us graph it a little bit easier. And when you factor this, there's a common factor of an x squared. So when I write it in factored form, I know two very important points. I'm going to know that these are my x-intercepts. And so that's going to come up later on for helping us. Of course, the next one for factoring isn't so nice, isn't so easy. But if we look at our table of values for the next one, so I'm going to erase this. I'm going to have the same things here. It takes a while, right? Negative 2 to the power 4. So we would have negative 16 plus 48 minus 36 plus 3. 
no, that's not quite right. Negative one, does that look about right? You plug in negative one, what are you gonna get? You're gonna get negative one plus six minus nine plus three. Negative one. Plug in zero. Oh, so zero is so nice to plug in. Zero, you get three. Plug in one. Negative one minus six minus nine plus three. Negative 13. Plug in two. Negative 16 minus 48. Minus 36 plus 3. Sorry for the interruption. Just a really quick announcement. The boys' rookie hockey team, there will be a short evening at 12.05 today in Mr. Metcalf's room, room 2A1. For all boys who want you to try out for the rookie tournament team, please bring your signed permission slip form. I'm not going to, I'm going to make this one at three. I'm just going to finish this up quickly, guys. And now, those are the points that we have. This really doesn't make us feel like we know what this is looking like. That's where the table of values runs into a bit of problem. But we know that the end behavior acts like a negative parabola. So we know that it has to start down here, has to go through these points. And our graph is going to look something like this. My right, questions you can do for this are 5, 6, and 8.